Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Andreas, and today we have a bit more reviewing to do. This past weekend, I played Grix's Delver to a top eight finish in a Legacy Challenge, and I faced the pseudo mirror four times. And I actually thought I wanted to make a video where it's all about reviewing Delver versus Delver. So hopefully, I can showcase some cool situations. Maybe we can locate some. Uh, suboptimal plays I made. Maybe we can locate some genius plays that I made. Who knows? Um, but yeah, that's going to be the purpose of today's video. But let's start us off with a deck tech first. I'm playing pretty standard Grixis Delver. Um, I guess the only flex slots are like a couple of stifles. They do a lot these days. Obviously, the, the wastelands and the posting fetches. Um, but also like triggers out of goblins, triggers out of leyline binding, etc. This card is very flexible at the moment. Then I play only three days. My logic on this card is basically that I want to see the first copy always, but drawing the second can be kind of bad in a lot of situations. And people seem to respect it and play around it anyway, so it's a way to kind of, you know, cheat a little bit and get one more sideboard slot. Um, or in this case, <clears throat> a sideboard card in the main deck. So I play one main deck counterbalance. It really shines against opponents opposing um brainstorm decks it's like a chalice for one ish with upside uh, sometimes like it's not a reliable chalice of the void for one for sure but that's like the most likely outcome and then in combination with channeler and brainstorm you can set up some stuff and uh yeah do some dirty stuff uh this deck has a couple of hard removal in molten collapse molten collapse is basically sorcery speed terminate that also takes out um chalice of the void that also saves me a little bit of sideboard slots um yeah other than that pretty standard you have your four wastelands three of each duels eight fetches uh sideboard uh tries to address goblins red prison mirror i bring hydroblast in against a bunch of decks counterbalance also for the mirror force negation combo um pyroblast any blue deck really price greedy mana bases and uh, merit lay strategies meltdown um people playing seed of the synod people playing chalice of the void stuff like that um i chose to spread out my graveyard hate surgical you know gives you one more card to not lose turn one on the draw uh can be valuable against uro page is also good against like muxus and green sun zenith stuff like that and it's like the permanent uh yard hate the opponent needs to remove it if they ever want to reanimate and then like unlicensed hearse because I actually think that card is quite strong in the pseudo mirror. So yeah, let's see if that card sees the light of day in today's matches. I'm gonna be lining up four matches. Um, I played against the deck in round one, round three, round five, and the quarterfinals. So yeah, hopefully this is gonna be fun. Can't wait to show you guys the matches. Don't go anywhere. Okay, round one time. I won the die roll. I have some one drops and a force of will, so yeah, easy keep. Um, so I have to think about which one drop to start on here. The reason why I go Delver is I have the bobble that's gonna help the Delver flip. So it's you know potentially faster damage wise. The opponent also goes Delver. See, I didn't crack my bobble on my turn, I cracked my bobble on my opponent's turn to look at the top cutter of my library. If it's something that flips the Delver, I put the Bobble Trigger on the stack first before the Delver Trigger, and vice versa. So it was a Volcanic Island. So I draw first. I don't flip Delver, it's another Bobble. Now, what I choose to do here is I can... I play Channeler first because I want my Trigger and set up the top of my library. Um, but I also go down from Force of Will. I don't think Force of Will is very good in this matchup. So let's say I'm playing against Combo or whatever. I could hang on to this Force, but not the case here. We surveil away a Merktide. I draw the Bowmasters, and I make sure to flip the Delver next turn. Don't attack. Don't want off of the trade. The opponent flips the Delver here, uh, which makes sense because this matchup... They saw Underground Sea, that means they really don't want the Delver to die to Bowmasters, so great play by the opponent. The opponent flipped with Lightning Bolt, so now they have to choose if they respect Daze or not. Opponent attacks, makes a bunch of sense. If I just have a random Lightning Bolt, 
then the blocker is not going to do anything. Let's see. Okay, they actually decide to not respect the bolt. Uh, the days, rather. So Delver gets in there, and now I think what I do is I keep the ponder because at this stage I actually want to, you know, protect my bowmasters. So I believe what I do here is play third land and pass. Yeah, I like this. Because now all of a sudden I'm in a race that I'm most likely winning, and my opponent might need to cast cantrips or one drops. Also note that if the opponent casts Delver, I can always kill it with Bowmasters. If the opponent casts Channeler, they only have uh, land and instance in the yard, so it's very likely Bowmasters is a Flame Tongue Cabo here. So I believe here I respond to the Surveil... Maybe it doesn't matter. Okay, I do respond to the Surveil trigger. Um, because... You know, bad stuff can happen, and they could get delirium in response. The opponent forces, and that's basically the main purpose of my force of will here is trading off opposing force of wills. Anything other than that is like pretty bad. The opponent had zero cards here. I resolve bowmasters. I kill channeler, and then we have another bowmaster trigger coming on my turn when the the portent uh, delayed trigger resolves. Right, so then I can kill off the Delver as well, and uh, handily win the race. I don't remember what I do with this Bowmaster. I think I slow roll it. I did the math, and it didn't really matter in the, the clock uh, scheme of things to, you know, grow this orc um, one more. But yeah, pretty clean cut game one here. Um, realizing the matchup, um, not prioritizing the force will early, but then later when I had a key play, which was the Bowmaster, then I don't run out of my cantrip because all of a sudden um, force of will is, is viable or important again. So yeah, pretty pretty easy game one here with some small decisions that led to the victory. Let's see if we can continue. Okay, here we are. So my cyborg plan for the mirror is something along the lines of cut all counter spells, add hydroblast, counterbalance, pyroblasts, uh, and Hearse. We have a land heavy hand here, but I mean, it's fine. I think mulliganing is very bad in the mirror in general, so I don't mind. And the games go pretty long, so there's that. I draw Hearse, which is kind of awesome. Now I have a an abundance of, of impactful two drops. Lightning Bolt to Delver, so the opponent is kind of picking up where they left off. I decide to play around days this game. So, by drawing a 1-drop, pretty cool, I'm not under that much pressure. The opponent also has a bolt for that, so three types in the yard. So this is probably the time to try and Bowmaster uh, the Channeler. Let's see what I go for. The opponent has four cards in hand. Ooh, they ponder second main. Okay, so that means that they should have pondered first main, to be honest. Um, it, they would have gotten in for more damage. I'm lucky there. I save a few life points. So now that the opponent's tapped down from Pyroblast, I can either go Counterbalance or Hearse. Let's see what I go for here. I go for Hearse because my hand is so soft to Merktide Regent, and I just start, you know, did I remove the wrong cards here? Yeah, I removed the wrong cards even. That's interesting. I think it, it's pretty obvious I should have removed double lightning bolt. Then my opponent would have land instant sorcerer in the yard. So the two damage that my opponent wasted earlier, I kind of gave them back here, which is not something I will recommend. I still play around days, I believe. I don't want days to be good this game where I have a bunch of lands. Now the opponent plays Counterbalance. This gets interesting now, right? Counterbalance milling over Delver, which is very interesting. Another Channeler. Huh. So now I have a good turn here. So I have to think about how do I play against Counterbalance? Because the perfect world is I play a land to play around days, then I play my two drop and my one drop. Because of Hearse, Bowmasters kills opposing Channeler. 
So now I need to learn what's on top of my opponent's deck um, by playing a spell out. Let's see which one I go for. Go for a Lightning Bolt on one of the Channelers. The opponent flips a Pyroblast, so it gets countered. Kind of brutal, but that's, you know, what the card does. Um, I can now play Bowmaster, shoot for one, and use the Hearse to finish it, finish off the, the Channeler. The opponent has Pyroblast and two unknowns, and I believe my opponent concedes here. Yeah, my opponent concedes here, so I guess my opponent's hand is just, um, you know, Cantrips and Pyroblast, but I do think it's too early to concede here. They do have a counterbalance. My clock is not that great. Um, but sometimes that's how it is. You never know what's going on with the, with the opponent. So, uh, I think this was a game where I was favored, but it was, uh, it was, it was close. The Hearse, really awesome card here. I don't think the opponent has any removal for it. I can just keep, you know, picking my opponent's graveyard apart. And then all of a sudden I can just tap two creatures and attack with like a 10, 10 or whatever. So yeah, pretty, pretty cool start to the tournament. Let's see if we can continue the winning ways. All right, it turns out I misspoke. This is round four, not round three. Doesn't matter too much. Um, at this point, I am 3-0. So yeah, looking, looking pretty nice here. Um, my opponent is usually on Delver, so that's my mindset when I open this hand. And this looks fine, right? I have a little bit of everything. Um, maybe I can surprise my opponent with Stifle. I can sculpt my hand with Cantrips. I have Bowmaster for later. Counterbalance is the mirror breaker, so yeah, let's see. When it's on the play here, plays Delver. So let's see, why did I? Oh, yeah, I remember this now. Okay, so I draw Bobble, which is, you know, decent draw, but my last result in Legacy at this point is Control, so I decide to play Flooded Strand Pass to hopefully make my opponent, let's say, they cast Ponder, they see a couple of Lightning Bolts, then they shuffle or, like, prioritize the wrong cards, basically. I'm giving up drawing one card ahead of schedule, which is a price to pay. Um, so I try and get a little clever here because of uh, recent results. The opponent does not flip the Delver. The opponent plays Wasteland. Let's see what I do about that. I go and fetch here. I fetch Underground C, cast Ponder, I shuffle, then I play Bauble. Then I kind of figure, okay, I, I can't risk my opponent playing Grixis and I get this Bauble caught by a Bowmaster. So I do it right away, look at my own deck, see a Brainstorm. I believe I shuffle that away, not sure. Oh, I didn't see a Brainstorm. Never mind. So the top of my opponent's deck, got it. Because I don't want to fetch. I want to sit on Stifle Mana. Okay. So I know my opponent's flipping Delver here. So right now I'm basically hoping my opponent tries to wasteland my Underground Sea so I can Stifle. Take three down to 15. Opponent cast Brainstorm. Opponent tries to wasteland. I go get my Volcanic. I Stifle. That's a good exchange for me. Trying to protect my mana here. Play out a third duel, then I play counterbalance, which is like a must force for the opponent, I feel like. They don't force it. So now let's see if counterbalance can do some magic. I'm still under pressure against this Delver. The opponent, oh, okay. So the opponent doesn't wasteland me there. So what does that tell me? It kind of tells me that my opponent needs this Wasteland to pay for days later in the game. That's usually my mindset. I draw another Stifle, which is kind of cool. Play Delver. I play Wasteland. Can't remember what I do with it. Maybe I need this mana to play around days when I try and Bowmaster. Maybe I Wasteland on the opponent's upkeep. I can't remember. Okay, the opponent goes Seek the Beast and End Step. The good thing is I have Brainstorm and I have a two-drop, uh, Daze or Bowmaster, so I can Brainstorm in response. The opponent fetches in response. I fetch in response to Stifle. So this all of a sudden became a brutal turn for the opponent. So even if the opponent has Daze at this stage, I have Daze. But they don't. So no Daze, no Force Will in the opponent's hand. I choose to put back Bowmasters as my flip. And I, yeah, I wasteland my opponent's Volcanic Island. 
And now I have a situation where I might need to upkeep Brainstorm to flip the Delver because Bowmaster doesn't flip Delver, but I wanted the days in hand in case my opponent played something um, awesome this turn. So a lot of small decisions here. The opponent puts me to seven, so I need to close out this game. The opponent can also waste lay me out of black here if they want. They ha oh yeah, 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 I remember this. It turns out they have double wasteland, so they get me out of red instead. That means two of my three volcanics are gone. Pretty awesome play. So the opponent's down to zero mana sources. So what I decide to do here is just ensure the flip. Um because the Bowmasters, you know, wasn't gonna do it. Flip with Ponder. Bobble. See a land, which is unfortunate. The opponent is now in a draw go situation. I stuck a. Uh, I had a one drop on top here to protect against Bolt. I play Ponder. The opponent responds. What is this? Ah, on Holy Heat. Okay, so I go and blind flip the um, counterbalance. If that doesn't work, I'm pretty sure I'll out base. But I'm a champ. I have a Delver on top of the deck. I hit a land here, develop my land, pass the turn. I, I just need to stabilize this game, and I'm, I'm in good shape. Mainly because of the counterbalance. So I have Delver, and I have a land next, I believe. I want to play around days. So um, I don't jam the Merktide. I'm you planning to use the Bowmasters as, you know, check for days card. They don't have the days, so I'm feeling pretty confident right now. I believe I have a land on top in this scenario, a third underground sea, so I can play um, Merktide Regent out, out, uh, around days. The opponent plays Channeler. I let that resolve because my plan is Merktide region, so my opponent has to suicide attack anyway. Opponent draws a card. Ping. Throw my army. I'll play a big Merktide. I have days in case my opponent has force or day or days. Kind of the perfect scenario. The opponent forces. I can daze a force of will. And now I can play another Delver because. Um, yeah, I just feel like every time I check for days, they didn't have it. So I play another Delver and attack. The opponent double attacks. I can trade off the Delver um, to not go to four. I can eat the Channeler. The opponent has to pass. And uh, from here, the only out. So funnily enough, um, this is actually a cool play, I remember. I draw this fetch. But at this point, I'm like, the only way I can lose is double bolt, so I don't crack this fetch and play Chandler. I mean, just imagine losing this game to double bolt. Uh, that would be unforgivable. But it's like it's a play I, I I can see I can see some people making right because ah eh, the it's the opponent needs to be kind of lucky to have two bolts, but not really. They didn't show one bolt this whole game, um, so I think that's definitely a possibility. I get in with everything. I believe my opponent's at like one or two or something. The opponent goes to two. And from here, no outs. The opponent even concedes on the unstep. I'm I need to ask my opponent actually if they had double bolt here. It's it would just make the play or no play rather even cooler. Okay, that'll do it for round uh four. So I play against Delver again um round five and then again the quarterfinals. So don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss those. <laughs> Sorry guys, funnily enough, I got confused because I had counterbalance, but I, I, I played one on the main deck, so yeah, that was only game one we have for game two, I'm on the draw. Uh, yeah, this hand is decent, I can go turn one Chandler with Bobble Trigger, hopefully look for one more land. I'm gonna go Ponder turn one, that's always the good news when you play against Delver. I go Channeler, I go Bobble, I bin the Hydro Blast. At this point, I think I can do better. Um, blasts are good, but also a bit situational. I'm already at three types in the yard as well, so pretty fast Channeler threatening the opponent. Let's see what they go for. Okay, they go for Wasteland, they go for Delver. 
So I just want to see if I can get Delirium and start attacking. I feel it's okay to spend the first Pyroblast killing a Delver. Find a Wasteland. I don't want Wasteland in this spot. Attack for one. It gets Hydro Blasted. The opponent casts Brainstorm. Like, this is actually a good example of... So the opponent casts Brainstorm here to play around Bowmasters and to make my days as bad as possible. But it is like a bad time to cast a Brainstorm. So it's like small, small value, I guess. Here, I don't want to get my power, uh, counterbalance power, uh, dazed, rather, because it's like my only piece of action. I'm running a bit heavy on lands here, so I definitely don't like my spot. My opponent tries for a, a uh, counterbalance, but I have the Pyroblast. And then I feel like it's time for me to try and, and play a counterbalance. My opponent has a Pyroblast. Sad, they don't. Maybe I, I can do good things. I draw Brainstorm, which is a cool card for later in case this resolves, and it does. So now I have a counterbalance in play. My opponent, if my opponent plays something, I can check. And if then I can like reshuffle if they play something else. And I have a couple of cracks at it. Opponent plays counterbalance. I reveal uh, second counterbalance rather. I reveal Hydro Blast, which doesn't which doesn't do anything. So I can't remember. Maybe I shuffle this. I don't shuffle that. I keep it for Pyroblast because that's like my opponent's answer to counterbalance. I try and cast Brainstorm. Opponent flips a land, so that's fortunate. So that unfortunately also means that the bobbles aren't playable this turn. But I still feel like if I keep one bobble, I can kind of sneak it in later. My opponent is very likely to shuffle away that Misty. That's my that's my logic here anyway. The opponent plays a Surveil Land, which is kind of cool. Here's a Murktide Regent, so... Wonder what a skilled magician does here. Fetches. Counterbalance, but no Murktide on top, okay. So here's a 6-6 Murktide, and I draw a blank. Play Bobble, opponent reveals days. I look at the top of my deck, which is Ponder. I believe I keep that Ponder. And I, yeah, I don't fetch, I draw the Ponder. So I can't say this is looking good. The opponent will start the beat down here. We both have a counterbalance. I have a fetch, so I have a little bit more flexibility. I'm hanging on to the wasteland because uh, I might need to need, need it to pay for spells later. And the opponent only plays one tropical, so if they ever expose that, I'm willing to kill it. I'm at eleven here, so the clock is definitely ticking. So. I draw Brainstorm, I'll cast the Ponder, see what happens. The opponent has Unholy Heat, very unfortunate. But the thing about that is, I just drew Brainstorm, that means I can let my opponent draw the Unholy Heat, then I can try again with the Brainstorm, which is like my way, to, my way back into this game, right? So on my opponent's draw step, I cast Brainstorm, they reveal Wasteland. I get attacked to five. Uh, definitely not looking good here. Let's see what I go for. I fetch to four. Play a Bowmaster. When I said 17, Bowmaster doesn't do anything right now, but it could in the future. I try the same. When it does not use counterbalance, uh, can't remember why. Oh, maybe it's because it's a land. So I find my own Merc Tide here alongside a Molten Collapse. So I, since the Bowman, the reason why I go for Collapse over play a big Merc Tide is the opponent did not uh, counter the Bowmaster, so I know the coast is clear on two drop. The pitfall here is the opponent having Hydro Blast. But they don't. So now I'm looking in, I'm in pretty good shape, I would say. I have a Merc Tide region coming, I believe. Unholy Heat, I believe. Um, I let that happen because I prioritized protecting the Murktide, which may or may not be correct. I'm really not sure.
maybe I'm supposed to make it so that my opponents uh, like ponders and brainstorms are bad draws. Unclear. But there's also Seek the Beast that the opponent could have. So yeah, maybe the Hydroblast is better later. Who knows? There's a Wasteland on the opponent's side. I try and, you know, short my red mana. Here comes Murktide Regent with Hydroblast backup around Dace. When it has Bobble. Bobble's not really going to help my opponent here. And if they didn't have Pyroblast, uh, like, now, they don't have it now either. So... Pretty happy with my position here with the Murky. I hang on to my cards because Brainstorm might help me set up um, a counterbalance. Bowmaster is an awesome draw here because it kind of... Mm, it can kind of slam the door in case Murktide gets destroyed. So here my opponent casts Seek the Beast. I Brainstorm a response with the intention to put Bowmasters on top as a two-drop. The opponent does not counter the Brainstorm, they flip another land, and yeah, now the world is just my Oyster. That gets countered, the opponent does not have an answer for a Murktide, and I end up winning another game where I'm horribly behind in the, in the beginning. Um, counterbalance, I feel like it was like, not that good on either side, but I drew two Brainstorms and my opponent didn't. I guess that was basically the, the difference. Okay, so right now... I'm 4-0, that means I clinched top 8, um, but I'm still going to, you know, do my best and play out the last two rounds and see if we can do damage. So, uh, yeah, don't go anywhere. Next round is also a Delvermere. Okay, this is round 5. This is the deciding game after trading blows, games 1 and 2. It all comes down to this. I have a 1-lander here, but I'm not going to show weakness. I'm going to play the Chandler turn 1. And hopefully get to untap, brainstorm, and get into the game. Hmm. I get to brainstorm, mill over a dragon, find some very mediocre cards, wasteland my opponent. Opponent cantrips further, I play Delver, I miss my land drop, which the opponent will learn about in a second. And since that's the case, I'm an easy wasteland target. A brick here, so now I'm in a terrible spot, but I can still like draw lands to get into this game. I do find a, a flooded strand here. No delirium. Let's see if we can catch a merc tide with, uh, with the pyroblast. That would be an awesome exchange. My opponent plays a creature. I bolt to get the the triggers from Chandler. Can't remember what the opponent does here. I think it's maybe counterbalance. Let's see. Counterbalance. I try and pyroblast it on the stack. I mill over a daze. I get dazed. Not ideal. Not ideal. I try and ponder. Ponder resolves. Shuffle no land. Or no, you know, colored land. I spike one off the top. I get in for three, so right now I'm actually, you know, in a decent, I'm like, I'm, I'm competitive here, right? I fetch for no, for no reason. I remember this play. That was not a good play. Let's see if we can finish the opponent off with, like, bold bowmasters, etc. That's my objective at this point. I draw a third bolt, so I try and play Hearse. The opponent has at this point shown two daces, so I'm not respecting the third. So I play this card out because if I, I stick a Hearse, I can kind of control my opponent's graveyard. Don't have to deal with Mercs, don't have to deal with Channelers in a long game. And uh, then this card can maybe attack for lethal some time down the line, but the opponent has other plans. I get forced. Opponent lands the 7 7, which is terrible news for me at this point. My only counterplay is playing my own. So, funnily enough, this is a game where I don't have time to unload these bolts. But I have like 
almost lethal damage. In I have lethal damage in hand, but I don't have time to un unload them, right? So there's the fourth pole. Yeah, yeah, this is awesome. I play Big Murky. I believe it's only a 7 7. Yeah, it's only a 7 7. Put in place Channeler. Place. Uh, shows. Mm, yeah, it goes Channeler, Pyroblast, attack for 7, and time is running out for me here. I don't believe. I need to spike, like. Um, uh, Pyroblast. And I tried the desperation move to, you know, kill the channeler, but the opponent can mill over and get delirium in response, shoot me for three down to seven. That means the flying merc tied a lethal, and that's all she wrote. I wish my opponent good luck in the top eight, but at this point, I also know that I'm in the top eight, so uh, I'm looking for my sweet, sweet revenge. And as fate would have it, I play against the same player in the quarterfinals, so uh, yeah, don't go anywhere. All right, it's quarterfinals time. It's top eight of the Legacy Challenge. I'm paired against the same Delver player, so uh, now it's time for wrench. I will showcase the full three games. So uh, yeah, enjoy. I have a one lander here with three channelers in it. So basically, what I'm looking for here is to find uh, a land, and I do. I believe what I do here is I draw the days, then I have fetch underneath. I don't hope to daze turn one. I'm definitely not dazing a ponder. So now I can develop two one drops and I have a daze. That should be good, right? Lightning bolt, lightning bolt. I choose to daze that. Great sequence by the opponent, killing the channeler first. I find another land, which is cool. So now I can deploy double channeler. Pretty, pretty awesome situation. The opponent has Wasteland. That's not doing a whole lot. They play Big Merc. Big Merc Tide is actually insane here, so I need some help. I need, need a, like either Molten Collapse or Lightning Bolt here. Um, alternatively, just a Merc Tide, actually, to, uh, to, to make sure I don't have Delirium. Let's see what I can find off the Delver Flip. Like a true champion of the game, I flip with Lightning Bolt. The opponent knows that, to be fair. They block. I bolt before damage to get two triggers. I mill over Force and another Channeler. The opponent tries to waste slam me here. Then I'm just going to slam the Bowmasters. Great play by the opponent if they actually have the dace. But they don't. Take six, six, seven. All of a sudden, the opponent's at 10 life. They can only play a Channeler. Your boy draws another lightning bolt. The opponent's looking for forcible in response. They don't get it. I attack my opponent down to one, and yet yeah, I just had the perfect draw here, right? Um, I didn't. I didn't care about like Mercta region. I didn't care about days. I didn't care about wasteland. I just drew like quad one drops or whatever, and uh, beat my opponent down. All right, so we're up a game here. Let's see if we can. Shut this down and uh, advance to the semis. All right, on the draw here, up a game, zero lands, easy mulligan. I believe, yeah, I mul I multi five here, so I need to get rid of one more card. I get rid of molten collapse. My only play is like go channeler, go bobble, bolt your threat. Hope to s randomly get into the game. I actually like the pyroblast, um, the pyroblast draw for giving me a shot. I mill over a bobble, draw off the bobble. See if the opponent can flip the Delver into an insectile aberration. They did not succeed. Play Chandler, play Bolt. Yeah, the opponent did a good job of not really respecting days throughout this match. Delver gets in there. I think I double bold as well. Um, trenched all the game. The opponent goes counterbalance, which is horrible for me. 
So now I think what I do is I upkeep, I try and pyroblast the counterbalance because I can't beat that card if they start like having, you know, Chandlers, Brainstorms, etc. And I feel like I'm, I'm just stone dead if that counterbalance doesn't, doesn't get destroyed here. Try and kill the counterbalance. The Impota has a Brainstorm. Puts a one drop on top, which is a Delver. I try and play a Brainstorm. Let's see if they put another one drop. They did. And at this point, it's almost impossible to win the game. Delver flips. I'm going to attack the 15. So, yeah, my mulligan to 5 here didn't really, didn't really pay off, to say the least. My opponent had an insane hand with um, one drop, bolt, one more one drop, brainstorm to set up the balance, counter me twice, play Merc Tide. So two very one-sided games to begin this quarterfinals. So it'll all come down to game three, and that's what we have up next. All right, I'm playing first. Game three, it all comes down to this. Quarterfinals, let's see who goes to the top four. I have a great hand. Turn one Delver, a little help flipping. Turn to hearse, hard removal for later. The opponent's on the mold of six. I'm feeling confident here. I don't flip the Delver. Oh, I did I did flip the Delver. With with a bolt. That prompts my opponent to lightning bolt. Which makes a lot of sense. Let's say I have days. I I, I get to days. I have to days before I get to two lands. Um like on my upkeep on a bad time. If I don't have days, Delver's gone, right? So good play by the opponent. I play Hearse. I get forced. So now th remember, the opponent's on a mold of six, and they just forced me. So I'm up two cards right now. But here, here comes my Bane. Here's Counterbalance. I, I do sneak in a Delver here. Opponent shows a fetch, which is a bad draw. So I, I like my situation here. Let's see if we can flip the Delver even. We, we even flipped the Delver with a Brainstorm. That's cool. Attack. Opponent at 15. I decide to wait here on the Brainstorm. Seek the Beast. My Brainstorm response. Let's see if we're lucky. The Brainstorm resolves. That means they don't have a one drop. And then I can find, like, Hydro Blast. That's the dream here. I do get countered. Seek the Beast resolves. The opponent finds um, Force of Will and Chandler. This is, this is kind of cool. They play out Druid um, and Chandler. I try and, I try and Lightning Bolt the Questing Druid, but, but I get counterbalanced. Very sad. Okay, so I draw a Pyroblast. I try and... and kill the beast. The opponent has a one drop on top, so I kind of have to pass the turn, then... on draw step, I Pyroblast. Try and get rid of the counterbalance. I actually let... I can't remember why. Maybe it's something to do with the Merc Tide, because... I'm kind of trying to tempo out my opponent. Yeah, I realized I should give myself a fighting chance against Murktide, which may or may, not, may or may not be correct. And then if my opponent does not play Murktide, I, I kill the counterbalance. But I, I actually can't remember here. Maybe I changed my mind again. Yeah, I changed my mind again. I kind of delayed the decision because I can... Um... I can see what I draw, right? Let's say I draw a uh, Molten Collapse. Then, for sure, I know what to use my Pyroblast on. So I try and get more information here. Um, my opponent tries to manipulate the top here by uh, killing my Delver in response to the Ponder, which makes sense. If they can rearrange a one-drop, that would be awesome. The thing is here, I need to kill the Murktide and let the Counterbalance stay in play and get lucky later. I'm lucky to find Murktide on the um on the ponder and play it. So like the best possible draw here. I know my opponent has a brick on top. 
I resolve Murky, but unfortunately they have Pyroblast and can mill over the brick on upkeep. Very good trick trick with Chandler. You play your interaction like Bolt or Pyroblast on upkeep to get rid of a bad card or to, you know, if you don't know the card, you can see if you want it or not. Playing Bobble from Show's Brainstorm. I draw Bowmasters, like the perfect draw, right? My opponent hasn't drawn the Brainstorm yet. They have one card in hand. I can kill the Channeler. I get around Counterbalance. Ooh, this is cool play. The opponent plays a Daze, not to make me pay one mana, but to clear the Brainstorm on the top. Let's see if they find a two drop. They don't find a two drop, they find Ponder, which is, so now the opponent's on zero cards drawing Ponder against the Bowmaster. So, should be a done deal, right? Opponent plays that. I hang on to the Pyroblast because the opponent could easily have stacked a one drop there. See what they draw. They draw Channeler. That's where I feel like, huh. So here I'm playing around, I guess, Murktide. But I'm not sure if that's the right call. Let's see, they already drew one Murky. So tough, because I, I'm not supposed to let this, this resolve if my plan is to kill the counterbalance. Let's see what I decide on. Okay, my opponent cast Ponder, last card in hand, mills over counterbalance. They don't know the top. Let's see what I do here. I try and kill the counterbalance in response. Opponent hits a one drop. Resolve Ponder. Shoot them down to six. I don't attack because. Hmm, let's see. Why don't I attack? I don't attack because Dragon Rage Channeler must attack, and I don't care about chip damage. And once that is tapped, I can get in with my 3 3. If I attack with the 3 3, my opponent can trade off the Channeler and really stem the bleeding. So I decide to not do that. My opponent attacks for three because it has to. Yeah, this game is insane. This is one of the best games I've played in a long time. I'm sad about the small, the small things I didn't do perfectly, but yeah, this is just, just a top quality game. So let's see. The opponent has two cards. They resolve some ponders. This looks like a big dragon. Murktide hits the, hits the field. Now the opponent has an 8-8. Eight, eight. I draw Channeler. I play Channeler. It resolves. I can't attack now. So I'm at 13. The opponent has 11 power. The opponent has 6. This is really getting down to crunch time here. Do you want to have a play on the upkeep? Yeah. I want to draw a card. And now things get interesting, right? So here I'm suspecting the Chandler attacks alone. I trade off. And I try and play the longer game. But uh, my opponent has other plans here, if I remember correctly. The opponent sends both. Now, please take a second here. What would you do in this spot? Take 11. Try and win. Block the Channeler to trade off to buy a turn. Chum block the Murktide for whatever reason. This is very, very hard. I debated this for a while, I remember. Um, and the solution I, I, I found was... I can't beat Lightning Bolt on, if my opponent just has Lightning Bolt, I just lose, right? Because let's say you just go, oh, kill the Channeler, um, take four, go to two. Uh, I decided that I would be terrible against Lightning Bolt if my opponent has Lightning Bolt. So I'm not going to block here. I'm going to make my put my opponent on having mono cantrips. Mono cantrips in hand, and this is like a desperation move where they want me to, um, they want me to block and then kill me next turn. 
Let's see. I take the damage, I go to two. My opponent plays a Brainstorm, so this is Desperation Time. The opponent is on the lookout for the Lethal Bolt here, pretty obviously, because I'm going to get the biggest Org army in town, put my opponent to three here. They mill over Pyro. Three Bowmaster Triggers. Fetch down to two. Bauble. That was the last card in hand. They put Ponder into the yard. So now I know my opponent can look at one more, get one more card on my upkeep, and that's going to be it. If they get it, if they find Bolt, I'm dead. If they don't, I'm onto the semis. The opponent goes down to one here from the Bauble triggering the Bowmaster. And there it is. The Lethal Lightning Bolt eliminates me from the tournament. This game was very, 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 very good. Um, the opponent played great. I feel like I played well, at least. Uh, yeah, th this match was uh, was something. Remember, this started off. This game started off with my opponent only getting to six and forcing a hearse. That's a great advantage for me. They bought back that advantage with with counterbalance by countering some stuff over the course of the game. And then at the end, my opponent drew two Merc Tides, I drew one. You can kind of boil it down to that. And then they did everything they could in their, in their power to dig for that Lightning Bolt to finish me off in the end. Taking four damage off of Brainstorm Pond. No, five. Brainstorm Pond. Oh, the Ponder got milled. Taking five damage off of Brainstorm uh, Bobble, facing a 7-7 seven, seven here, facing how much power is this? This is 11 power, right? And uh, yeah, the days didn't do me any favors. This game sitting there doing nothing, but that's just great magic. Um, and, and I thought it was pretty cool because I played against Delver four times throughout the tournament. And all of those small, small decisions every turn can kind of add up and be the difference between life and death at the end of the day. And uh, yeah, this time my opponent got there. Pretty, pretty awesome uh, to get there on the last possible draw, last possible bauble. But uh, yeah, that's why I love magic, thin margins, high octane, and just, yeah, close wins. I love it a lot. Guys, that's going to be it for today. Thanks so much for watching. If you like these kind of reviews, let me know. I'll happily do it. I mean, I do well in tournaments from time to time. Uh, so I, I can easily like handpick interesting stuff from the tournaments and kind of take you through it. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. And uh, don't be a stranger. See you next time.